In this example, we have a semicircular thin plate with constant density. We're given a radius and a mass of this semicircular plate. We're asked to find the mass moment of inertia, I, around the axis X and the axis Z, passing through the center of mass, shown here as G. Because the object has constant density, then the center of gravity or center of mass equals the centroid. So we need information about where the centroid is. For that, we can go to our tables. And in our tables, we find that this distance is going to be 4r over 3 pi. We're going to call that distance d. We are going to see that we know the mass moment of inertia for a point through its center of gravity of a thin circular disk. We have a half circular disk. So we can rearrange sort of an equation of our mass moments of inertia. So if this semicircular disk has a mass m, then if we have two sides, it's going to have a mass 2m. And that's just going to equal the mass moment of inertia of a semicircular disk of mass m, about O, plus the mass moment of inertia of another semicircular disk about O, mass m. We can write that out in equation form. Izz about O for the whole circle equals Izz about O for the upper half plus Izz about O for the lower half. Now in fact, our mass moment of inertia expression doesn't really care how the mass is distributed around the radius as long as it's at the same distance. So we can say this equals 2 Izz about O for a half circle. So it doesn't matter whether it's the upper or the lower one. So we're going to rearrange this and we're going to get an expression Izz about O for our half circle is going to be one half Izz about O for our whole circle. So from the tables, we can find the mass moment of inertia of this is one half m r squared. And I'm using a big M just to make a point that the masses of the full circle and the half circle aren't the same. So I can write this as one half, one half big M R squared equals one half of one half of two times the mass of our smaller circle R squared. These are going to cancel out and we're going to end up with an expression of one half m r squared. Now that gives us our mass moment of inertia about O, but doesn't give us our mass moment of inertia about G, and that's what we've been asked to find. So we're going to write our parallel axis equation. So we have to remember it's always I about G plus our extra term. So we have to write I Z Z about O for the half circle is going to be equal to I Z I Z Z about G for that half circle plus M D squared where we remember D is the distance here between G and O. We have to remember that we don't reverse the I about O and the I about G in this parallel axis equation. 
And we can remember which way it's supposed to go by remembering that about g is the smallest mass moment of inertia that we can have. So we always have to add something to the mass moment of inertia about the center of gravity to get any other mass moment of inertia. So we're going to rearrange this equation into i, z, z, g of our half circle equals i, z, z, o, again of the half circle, minus m, d squared. So we can express that i, z, z, o as 1 half m, r squared. And then we have m, and we remember the distance between o and g is 4r over 3 pi, all squared. This m always has to be for our half circle. So we'll put some numbers in. We remember that r is 0 0.1 meters, and m is 0 0.4 kilos and we get a value of i, z, z, g for our half circle, oops, equals 1.28 times 10 to the minus 3 kilogram meters squared. So we found our mass moment of inertia about the z-axis. So as we're looking in the front view, it's rotating about that point g. Now we've been also asked to find the mass moment of inertia about the x-axis. So if we look in the side view, it's rotating about that point g as well. So we can do a similar thing. If we're looking at i, x, x, we can see from our tables that for a circular disk, about O, remember this has a mass of 2M, it's two times our half disk mass, equals the mass moment of inertia about O for half a disk, plus the mass moment of inertia about O for the other half of a disk. So we can write that as an expression, i x x about o for the whole disk equals i x x about o for the upper half plus i x x about o for the lower half. And if you remember, it doesn't matter where around the axis the mass is distributed as long as it's at the right distance from the axis. So this is equivalent to 2 i x x about o for the upper half. So it's like we we folded it in half and both halves of the semicircle are pointing upwards. We can rearrange this because we want to have this i x x about O for the upper half equals one half I X X about O for the whole circle. And we can find that in the tables. So we can find in the tables that I about O for this object is one quarter big M R squared. So that big M just reminds us that the M in the tables is not the M of the half circle, it's the M of the whole circle. So we can write this as one half of one quarter big M R squared. And big M is just two little M, so one half of one quarter of two M R squared. Those will cancel and we find our expression about O is 1 quarter m r squared. Now we have to do parallel axis again. So there's a distance between G and O. It's that same distance D in the y direction that we've already seen. 
So with parallel axes, we're going to get I X X about O for the upper half equals I X X about G again for the upper half plus m d squared. We want to rearrange this because we want to find i x x for g, i x x for g for the upper half equals i x x about o for the upper half minus m d squared. So again, the mass moment of inertia about g has to be the smallest. So we'll fill in these expressions. We've got 1 quarter m r squared minus m times 4 r over 3 pi all squared. We remember r equals 0 0.1 meters, m equals 0 0.4 kilos, and we get our final expression i x x about g for that upper half is going to be 2.79 times 10 to the minus 4 kilograms meters squared. Thanks for watching this video. Find more videos and material at Mechanics Map.